Welcome to the City Debate Show. Join me around the table today. The Manchester City reporter at the Manchester Evening News, Jim. esteemed Mr Christopher Bailey, and footballer turned broadcaster Andy Hinscliffe. What are you laughing at now? No, no, no. He's wondering what's coming. <laughs> 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 just wait. <laughs> Bailey, <laughs> Portsmouth, you were quite scathing in your assessment of yeah. the performance. Yeah, it was probably, along with Middlesbrough and Bolton, the poorest performance of the season, collectively. Um, really no positives to talk about at all. Uh, Chad Evans had a late on, he did okay when he came on, and Shalem Logan tried his heart out at right back. That was about it. Do you know, every time he comes in, I have the Samaritans on speed dial. <laughs> <laughs> so let's, let's pick the bones out That's of it. That's because you only asked me when we lost. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> let's pick the bones out of it. Wayne Bridge, he's had a few games. Mm -hmm. Somebody said at the weekend, he looks better going forward than he does defensively. Didn't we already have that in Garrido? Um, Yes, possibly. I think he's going to be under a lot more pressure, I think, playing for City as well. It's, uh, maybe at Chelsea, the games that he played there, very different team. So he probably didn't have a lot of defending to do. He's under more pressure now. I think we've seen that with Shea Given as well. He's having to work very hard in goals. So these new players, certainly the, the defensive players, are, are being put under a lot of pressure. And they're making mistakes. And I think it's just the, the whole situation with City. We've got new players coming in, but our away from home form has been so bad, the new players are getting caught up in that as well. And we're just making mistakes, losing games. But I agree with Chris. I think the application throughout the team at the weekend against Portsmouth was, was dreadful, one of the worst of the season. I mean, the I'm going to find good about this. Now, the problem for Bridge is in that system where you play four, then two holding midfield players, then you th you're three behind the striker, is that the person on the left of the three has got to drop back and give Bridge some cover, otherwise he's two against one all afternoon, and that's, not, that's maybe exaggerating his defensive frailties a little bit because you know Rubinho wasn't in the mood or wasn't fit enough to, uh, <laughs> to help him out at the weekend. What about young Logan? He did okay. He you know, cleared one off the line, which would have made it more embarrassing had it gone in. Um, try, tried his hardest. I mean, you know, we've got a couple of good young right backs. Um, young Trippier, who uh, played in the youth team that won the FA Youth Cup and is starring in it again. He's, he's, he's one for the future at right back. So he'll have his work cut out to, to nail down a place, Logan, but you know, he's certainly good enough to make a career for himself. It's encouraged to see Mark Hughes playing him as well. I think he could have put Zabaleta yeah, back there. He could have dropped him back yeah. It's good to see that Mark Hughes has has got faith and is willing to put the young players in the well, team. Well, he said that, didn't he? He said, I could yeah. have put Fernandes in further up, dropped Zabaleta back to right back. And, but you know, Logan had earned his place by training well and uh, showing the right attitude. How did young Nadum do? I think Nadum's been doing well. I don't think I don't, anybody really came out of the Portsmouth game with any great credit, but I think he's, he's gone about his job really well. I think that is the position for him. I think with the ball at his feet, maybe at right back, has to, to, to press forward. I think he has more problems. If you ask him just to defend, similar really to Michael Richards, I think he's big, he's strong, he's quick, and he's getting regular games now. He's had so many injuries, hamstring problems, you need a run of games to get some form going. And I've been, I've been impressed with Richard Dunn absent. I think Company and Anur have, have done quite well, certainly the home games that I've seen him play. I think he's done really well. But as Chris said, the setup of the team, the whole back four and Shea Given are under so much pressure. We saw that against Middlesbrough. With they're under far too much pressure. You have to defend as a team. You can't just get the back four and the goalkeeper to try and keep an opposition out. You have to defend better than that from the front. It was tough for the centre half at Ports because you got Horidison and you got uh, Crouch and you got Distan and Campbell going up for set pieces. And really, we had a you know, team from Lily put out. Um, <laughs> Only really a newer and company who were good in the air, so they were under a lot of pressure, especially from Crouch. And Anu has played well. He's had four or five games now, yeah. and he's 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 not been faultless, but he's been near enough faultless in, in those games, and uh, you know, deserves his run in the side. Right. Well, let's nudge it forward a bit. Fred, Ayer, I think we all rate Fred's opinions. We're always here with him when he says something. But he was a bit concerned on Saturday. That City went for two out and out holding midfielders. Mm -hmm. He reckons most teams only have one true defensive midfielder. The other person is there to do a link job as well. What do you think about Zabaleta and De Jong in combination, Andy? Well, I think he's, he's playing that system, and I'm a big fan of, of Nigel De Jong. I think he's, he's the type of player modern football teams really need. I think Zabaleta's been a revelation in central midfield, but I think he's playing that way with those two holding players because we have Rubinho and Ilano, Stevie Island in the team. At times, we're, we're two or three players out of the game, and I think Mark Hughes wants the extra insurance of those two midfield players. He always knows if we lose the ball high up the pitch, if those three players don't get back, he's always got the insurance of two holding players. If things change, I think things maybe need to change. If you left Rubinho out or Ilano out, you can maybe change that system in midfield. But I think Mark Hughes is very worried. Yes, going forward, we want to score goals, but we don't want to concede, and that's why he has those two holding I mean, players not new, has he? in midfield. He's been playing it all season. So. He has, yeah, yeah, but yeah. I think you alluded to it in your match piece, Chris, that the problem is if you've got two people who are, it, they've One got no them. interest in going no. forward. If you've got five players going that way, 
you, you can end up with a hole between your defensive players and your well, attacking players. No, I don't want no interest, but neither of them. Are, you know, De Jong is an out-and-out -out defensive midfield player. He's a win it, mm -hmm. give it. Yeah, stand there and wait for him. To and you want one, don't and you? One of them, and Zabaleta's, you know, he's not a midfielder. He's done quite well. He's, he's, the he's goal, done well, he? but I think he's, he's done quite well getting forward. We've maybe reached the end of that experiment now with Zabaleta. It might be time to to put him back at, at right. But then, then you you're left with the thought: Well, who do you play as your as your engine room kind of link man? And the only one you can really think of who's got the the engine for it, who's fit, is Wright Phillips. Mm. I mean, if Johnson was fit, That's it'd be a different yeah. story. But you know, if you're going to have a conduit between those three and the two in the middle or you know maybe Sean will have to play in central midfield which caused all that controversy earlier in the season there's, when there's no real plan B is that we play the same team at home than we, than we do away if you had Johnson and Petrov suddenly then you can really adapt your team you can maybe leave Rubinho out you can leave Ireland out you can leave it and play a very different setup we haven't had the luxury of that we've had to play the same team home and away and at home I don't think we've been absolutely brilliant we've no, won seven no. lost five it's been it's been one way or the other. So really, we haven't been playing, I don't think, that well at home either for the last, what, four, five, six weeks. The one you feel sorry for is Bellamy, because he's there, <laughs> or, he's there, four defenders, you know, he's sandwiched between Campbell and Distan, who got their playing heads on for, for the first time in a long time for Portsmouth at the weekend. No service, nothing coming from wide, no balls through the channels. To, and you could see him just getting so frustrated. And, you know, it, it, we get away with him as a lone striker at, at home when he scored the two goals with everybody contributing but away from home he just looked so isolated on Saturday that you thought well you know now's the time to go 4-4-2 mm. possibly well I don't think anybody would be surprised at a word that he, uh, Chris has just said though would you mm. Craig Bellamy you want to see him playing off somebody big yeah because whipping around the edge of people mm -hmm. is what he's good at I think that will happen that's why they're looking at Santa Cruz a big tall centre for him to play off Craig Bellamy then becomes a very different player but I think it's worked for him at home because teams are a little bit more, more worried about going forward, so they sit back a little bit and I think give us more room and, and time and space to play. But away from home, like Portsmouth did, they just pressed the game. And Craig Bellamy was, he, he couldn't have any space to play, he didn't have the ball enough, wasn't, there wasn't any, anything provided for him from wide areas, just nothing happened. So he's not going to get in the game at home, to, that didn't happen. We had plenty of the ball at Portsmouth, we weren't starved of possession at Portsmouth, but they just did nothing with it. I mean, there's a lot of intricate little passes and back heels and feints and it doesn't, you know, it doesn't always work. When it doesn't work, it looks terrible. Right, well I've got two conundrums, one each for you. Mike Summerby was sat around this table last week and he suggested, uh, not as a stopgap, because that would be to do the lad down really, but he thought if you are looking for a target man for Bellamy to play off, in the short term, having missed out on Santa Cruz, why not give Chad Evans a go? Well, you, Ch Evans or Caicedo both came on at the week, and Evans got a really good header and a world-class save from David James to, to keep it at 2-0. He, he's been injured, but he's, he's, he's back fit again. But you'd have to play, you know, too wide. You'd have to play someone alongside him, I think. You know, you couldn't play him up there on his tot, um, which, you know, leads you back to a different... So my conundrum is, when you bring Jed Evans on against Portsmouth and we're not doing much anyway, why do you then pull Bellamy out to play on the wide rather than go with two up top? Well, I mean, Caicedo was on there as well, wasn't he? Um, by the end of that game, it was hard to know what we were That playing. was not a formation at the end, was it? No, no. I mean, and, and, you know, Hughes said afterwards, you know, if you, you, we give him all this information all week and then they ignore it, you know, and he was angrier than I've ever seen him. Um, after the game, because you know they just hadn't done what they'd planned to do and hadn't stuck to the game plan. And uh, but the last ten minutes, they wouldn't have made sense of that and strictly come dancing, would they? <laughs> <laughs> no. By the time the second goal went in, the game was over. I think it's whether you criticise the manager for his tactics, his team setup. If he sends a team out and they go and perform like that and don't play to the plan, he's going to be annoyed at the end of the game. He's going to say, "You got to ask the players why they well, didn't do it." He's on the line him. at the end of the day. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, of course yeah, it is. Yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. But here's your conundrum then. Has he, has he answered that? No. Satisfactorily I got, happy I got away with it. <laughs> <laughs> by saying nobody knows what's happening, yeah. <laughs> but the other conundrum, and Chris Bailey, I know, watched the game because he referred to it in, again in his piece. Midweek, two of our Brazilians play for Brazil at the Emirates, are admittedly in a friendly, mm -hmm. but look absolute showbiz. Yeah. And no disrespect, and I don't care how much we pay for them, but Alano and Rubinho weren't worth a, a place on that pitch against Portsmouth, were they? Well, no, I absolutely agree with you, and I think there comes a, a time when you've got to bite the bullet whether you pay... 32 million or 100 million for a player if you go away from home with the run that City are on and you think playing the same team you've just played at home isn't going to work you have to leave players out for the good of the team and I don't think you can be forced into playing somebody because you have to do that because the fans are looking on the owners are looking on if it's going to be a problem to the team if those players play there's got to be a plan B at the moment I don't see a plan B and I think Mark Hughes maybe at times he's being forced to play players because he has to do maybe not what he wants to do but with no Petrov no Johnson that would be a better situation, more players to, to choose from. But I think th there comes a time in Liverpool, Copenhagen away this week, 
they have to think about changing things and trying something different to try and change their look. Well, there's no doubt this is a, you know, this is a big one on Thursday. Um, the UEFA Cup's taking on massive significance in terms of, of a feel-good factor, in terms of qualification for next season. I mean, with the league form the way it is away from home, that seventh place, which may or may not get in Europe, looks, you know, it's looking a long way away unless we can start winning away from home. So you know, the, the UEFA Cup suddenly becomes a really, really big deal. Right, now let me ask you this, Chris. This is a, li a little bit political. At first, the breach between Mark Hughes and Alano looked as though it was terminal. It was going to go in the window. It didn't happen. And in recent weeks, there have been just slight signs of a rapprochement, a date on. Yeah. <laughs> but when Alano actually gets his chance, he doesn't exactly look that keen to grab it with both hands, no, does he, he? He lost. He started off OK. I mean, there was plenty of, I mean, there, was, there, was, there was effort there on Saturday, but nothing came off for him. And the, the more he tried, the, the less it worked. And, and then he just went into his shell. Um, it's hard to know what his position is. I mean, wide right didn't suit him. Um, then he moved into the middle, and then and and, and then you're diluting Stevie Island's performance. So it's it's a, it's a strange one, um, Alana. I don't think I don't think at the moment the two of them in the same team works. Right, we're going to talk a lot more about this in part two. Andy Hinchcliffe. Broadcaster now, but a footballer of no mean repute in his day. Played for City and for England. Chris Bailey, who writes about City for the Manchester Evening News. We've got a problem or two to solve, so we'll see you back here in two. City Debate Show with Andy Hinchcliffe and Chris Bailey. So, Chris, let me ask you this. Rubinho came off, so Mark Hughes did substitute him. Yeah. There was a slight situation where he said he's got a little bit of an injury, but was it some kind of Rubicon? Coming back to what Andy said, it's not easy to drop a £32 million player. No, Is he going to do it for Thursday? Well, you know, you can, the injury might be an excuse now. But, um, and he was hobbling around a bit, but whether that was just feeling sorry for himself or, or whether it was a, a proper injury, only the medical staff know. Hope it wasn't tactic. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think he needs a rest. I mean, you know... You can say drop, you can say axe, but he, he, need, he needs a rest. He's played, what, 24 games, um, played virtually every game he could, or he, 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 he could have played, you know, he's played in every game, he's been selected for virtually every game, he's played internationals for Brazil, he's been back to Brazil scheduled, he's been back to Brazil unscheduled, he's, you know, he's travelled around a lot, he's got the off-the-field problems that are well documented. Maybe he just needs a rest. I'm taking that as a and, yes. he, and he's never had... He's never all. I mean, wherever he's played, he's always had a winter break before in Madrid. Mm -hmm. You know, just had a winter break, so he's played all through that. Maybe he just he's physically and mentally tired. But if you if you put if, okay, if he's, he's half fit or whatever, if you put him on the bench. What what would be the harm in playing Greedo at left back, playing, playing Bridge in midfield, playing Chad Evans up with? Why well, not try something a bit different? An injury like that to Rubinho, if he's if he's not right, don't play him. Try something different. Because you're going to have to do. Because Petrov's injury has been a, has it been has, a nightmare. Yeah, yeah, because agree, it, it, yeah, does, it, it takes away your natural alternative. So. If you're not playing Rubinho, then you've got to put somebody in there who's maybe, you know, square pegging around all. Mm. Yeah, it's interesting, because I would like to see him shake it up a bit. I think most people would. But you've got a, a very strange league table where City need to get a few more points before mm -hmm. you can mm. stop looking behind you. Mm. And because the other avenues have closed down, the UEFA Cup is starting to look important. So oh, have we got yeah. a new Leeway 4 experimentation? I tell you, what about the Schalke game? Rubino didn't play against Schalke. No, we no. were absolutely outstanding yeah, in that game. Yeah, best we played performance Sturridge, season, wasn't it? He played on the left-hand side. Away from home in Europe, there's been no problem. You know, one in Cyprus, one in Denmark, one in Germany. Germany, you know, it's, but Schalke uh, was a tough, tough game yeah, away from home, yeah, wasn't it? And yeah. we, were, we were fantastic there. Rubinho didn't play in that game, and we totally it's, outplayed them. Sturridge played on the he left, did. but he, yeah. you know, he, he's not fit, so mm. there's another alternative that's not available. I mean, they, had, they did have ten players missing at the weekend, one ilk or another in, through injury, illness and suspension. So, it was, you know, you looked at the bench on Saturday and there wasn't an awful lot there. It was a pretty thin bench. Mm. But I'll stick with the question, has he got enough leeway? looking at City's current situation, to start making experiments? I think he's got to do something, hasn't he? Because one win in 12 away league games is, is simply not good enough, considering even though we've got a lot of players missing, we still have a pretty talented squad there. As Sean Wright Phillips is missing at the weekend, Richard Dunn, they'll come back into this in the next few weeks as well, so that will change things. But I still think we have the players there. If we can get virtually everybody fit, that you, most clubs would chop and change and try something if it's not working. And one win in 12 tells you it's not working, so you've maybe got to look at playing a different formation, different personnel. Maybe experiment's not the right word, because the players he could bring in have all played before. Yeah. He's not going to start blooding people who 
you've never heard of know, fr no. from the youth team. I don't think that's going to happen. But you, you can experiment within what you've got. Dun, Dun's back at the, uh, on Thursday night. Right, Phillips will be back on Thursday night. Then you might have to change it again for Liverpool. But uh, you know, one game at a time, and it's important to get a result. I think from the for the fans' point of view as well. I mean, you know. It, it, you lose a game now in the Premier League and everybody wants your manager sacked. I mean, it's ever, not just here, but every club. You know, it's like you lose one, oh, sack the manager. And, and that's kind of what he's going to have to live with for the rest of the season. Mm. If, uh, well, we know that from, I'm sure you've got exactly the same kind of phone calls and emails and texts that I was getting on Saturday. Mm -hmm. The manager in the modern game does take the brunt of it. Although, yeah. there is an interesting situation, and I'm sure you must have had a, at least some of these as well, Andy, of people who will accept a poor performance off a player, but when they don't think a player is given it 100%, yeah. that really does get people's going. You can't blame a manager for that. No, no I can't. And as, as an ex-player, I know what it was like. There's certain games where you don't play well, but if you then said your application wasn't quite right, then that's a terrible criticism of a, a, a professional player because you can't play your best in every single game. No, you don't expect that. But when City go to Portsmouth and things aren't going well, you've got to get the job done any way that you can do. Rubinho then has to become a defender playing on the left wing. You can't do all the tricks and skills and win the game, that, but you've got to then contribute to the team. And maybe we haven't had that. Enough players haven't realised that. Mentally, it's not clicked. We've got to go away from home and get something out of this game. However it happens, get something. We've not been doing it. The manager did say at the end of the game it would be too charitable to the rest of the team to blame the two Brazilians. He wasn't mm. blaming the two Brazilians. No, no one played that well. I mean, there were some that could say, well, I didn't do badly, but, you know, six or seven of them didn't play well at all. So. When you watch football as a fan, you know that a player will occasionally have a dog of a game. Yeah. But the players get out of jail card is effort, isn't it? Given one hundred percent, especially with with Rubinho, because you know how good he is. Yeah. yeah, and with Alano, you know that he can see passes that no one else sees. And we've seen him thread the ball through the eye of a needle and be, score brilliant goals. And the same with Rubinho; he's a match winner. He can turn a game in a second. But when he, you know, the, the body language isn't great. There's no there's no great movement from him as there wasn't at the weekend. Then you think, well, something's wrong. Plus the fact you're paying him half a million quid a month. Net, <laughs> net, you know, and he costs thirty-two and a half million pounds. I mean, whether that's right or wrong, you expect your star player to be your star player. I think if City offer him that, I, I don't. The money and the situation is out of Rubinho's hands completely. He's offered a contract. Course, he's done yeah. to do that. But again, it's what you go out there. And I'm not trying to just pick on him. I think lots of the other players have got to look at it in a similar fashion. If the two fullbacks can't get forward in a game, you've got to do your defensive job first and foremost. And the game's coming up at Copenhagen, Liverpool. They'll be asked to do a defensive job all the way through the team, and it's whether they've they've got the the stomach for the battle because lots of team have, teams have gone to Anfield, picks up points like Hull and Fulham and Stoke. Have City got the resolve to go there and do a similar job and I mean, just tough it out and get a, they and get a draw even? Colossal indicators, these two games. Not, not in, I mean, you can go to Liverpool and play brilliantly and lose. Anyone, uh, anyone can mm. go there. But these two, not necessarily just the results, but the two performances on Thursday and Sunday now are the, are the big things that I'll be, defeat, that I'll be watching yeah. and that the, Andy will be watching. And you'll be, you know, we'll be all studying to see if there's any signs that you know, some of them are not pulling the weight. Because if there's not a reaction to losing 2 0 to Portsmouth, when you could have gone seventh in the league. And, and you know that it's frustrating. And that could be a European. That could be a European spot at the end. So it is frustrating because it's two steps forward, one back, two forward, three. And I don't, back. And I don't actually believe we're that bad a team, even though the, the, the stats don't tell you that. I still believe we have a quite a, a strong squad there. We just need to get it together. Something needs to click, and we'll look very, very different. Well, I hope you're right. Let me ask you a question, Christopher Berry. How old is Daniel Sturridge? Ooh, you've got me now. Is he 19? Now? Right, 19. 19. 19. When you were 19, how many yeah. games did you play for Manchester City? Well, I got in the first team at 17, yeah. so I must have played... How old were you when you played 11? When about I played 11 games, probably about 16 and a half. <laughs> <laughs> so you'd be 17, right? 17, just over 17. So yeah, on the yeah, back yeah. of those 11 games, did you go to your then manager and say, yeah. I think that's worth 75 grand a week? I remember saying to Mel Machin, <laughs> I need more than 300 pound a week here. Um, it's a, it's so what did you make of the studied thing? Uh, well, if that's, if, if that's the kind of figures we're talking about, £60,000 a week. City didn't want to get fleeced on the Santa Cruz deal, weren't willing to go uh, pay an extra three or £4 million pounds on buying a player. They were very keen on buying. Should they spend that type of money on keeping a young player at the club? Should the advisors for Danny Sturridge be asking for that amount of money for a player who is a very good player, granted, I think he's, he certainly has a big future for, for City, but that kind of money for a player who really hasn't done anything yet I think is, is ludicrous to ask for. I'm not sure City will go anywhere near paying even half that. I think there has to be some common sense here. Well, I have to say, Chris, there used to be an old adage in football that prove you're a good player, and I think it was the great Sir Matt Busby mm. said it, 
you do well as a player. You don't have to go chasing money. The money will come chasing you. But it, there's not an awful lot of evidence to suggest that somebody should be putting that much money his no. way. And most clubs now will will do will split the wage. It would be fifteen thousand a week and another fifteen if you play yeah. or you're in the squad. So there's, there's, you know, and hopefully City will go that way because then it's re, you know you, you've got an incentive to actually double your money by getting in the team. Whereas if you're paying a, just a set rate of sixty grand a week to sit on the bench for. Four mm-hmm. years. I could do that. Uh, well, also, uh, in, this, in, in June, I'd be brilliant. <laughs> it's the other way. We're talking about thirty, sixty thousand yeah. quid. It's as if it's just uh, no, it's, 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 We don't know whether Danny. We don't know whether Danny's driving. Well, I assume Danny's not driving. No. So I assume it's his, his agents, and, and they're always trying to get the best for him. And you can understand that. But there's got to be a degree of reality. You know, look, look what everybody. If, if Richard Dunn and Stevie Island and Sean Wright Phillips are only getting around that amount, you know, for all his potential, Danny's still got a couple of years. Yeah. Um, and, but the, the, real, the really sad thing in all this is that the, the previous regime allowed his contract to run down to the point where he is out of contract this summer. So therefore, all the aces are in the hands of Danny Sturridge and his, and his agent. City have got nothing to bargain mm. with. I suppose City can say, well, we, t- we don't want to spend that money, we'll go and buy somebody in the summer. So it's whether you want to keep your young players. Yeah, well, you want to keep... I mean, I would want, I want to keep him, but Absolutely, I, don't, I wouldn't yeah. want to keep him at, at any cost whatsoever. But somebody's made a boo-boo, whether it was Sven or Taxin or whoever, last year, not getting this sorted out last year. When, you know, because every player wants a new contract when they've got a year left. But it's kind of, you know, the, the aces are in his hands. But hopefully something will be sorted out. I mean, I don't know any many other clubs who'd pay a 19-year-old 65 grand. Well, it's just that my, my eyes glazed over there. It wasn't because of what you were saying. It's, <laughs> <For what>? because, <laughs> it's because you said 60,000 a week yeah. and preceded it with the word only. Sean right. Wright Phillips is only getting... <laughs> it's, it's well, well when you look at, you know, you look at Rubinho and Kaká and all, and, and, you know, all the players at City who are on more than that, I say only 60, I mean, I apologise to, you know... To, to everybody who's watching because you know, it is a ridiculous amount of money but so. I think if you look at the City situation even players that are at the club and maybe the agents people dealing with these players are rubbing their hands as, as poly agents are with players at other clubs thinking oh it's easy money here we can ask for what we want if City want us they'll have to pay it but like with Santa Cruz maybe with Danny Sturridge City will say no no we've got the money we can pay that kind of money but we're willing to do this and we're not willing to go over that line and I think that City need to do that they've done it with Santa Cruz they might do it with Danny Sturridge I think they're going to have to they'll encounter this problem a lot with, with transfer dealings and getting players to sign on again. We do get blasé though, don't we? About figures. You do. You know, well, everybody you do, does. Yeah. You know, <laughs> oh, he's, he's on 100 grand. Well, so pay it him, you know. He's, mm-hmm. he's a great, you know, it's... Uh, when you stop to think about it, you know, we, I could retire on uh, on, a, on, a, on a month of Rubinho's pay. <laughs> well, I, mean, <laughs> I like to say, I'm as good as him in June. Of course I'm, you are. <laughs> but I think, let's uh, agree on one thing. The madness is a given. It's only oh, the yeah, number yeah, zeros yeah, yeah. that changes. I think we, have, we all accept it as fans. I think it's just so. There, and, uh, many, many thanks as always to Chris Bailey, who's, of course, the City reporter at the Manchester Evening News. And always a treat to sit around the table with Andy Hinchcliffe. International footballer with England, great left back with Manchester City. Hey, I'm not a bad broadcast if you get the chance to listen to him. I'll see you same time next time, City Debate Show.